Clint, uh, Clint was uh, wanting to talk about it. The one constant is change. And so I'm going to transition this over to Clint here. And I've got him up on the screen now, darling. And I, I want to welcome you back to the show and our health guru and personal trainer, Clint Fuquay. Yeah, and thanks for having me back. The, yeah. the, the, the book reading almost doctor over here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, um, you know, and and he's going to share with us the, the 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 taking the planning for your you know change can you plan for change in your well you can you plan for change in your health and that's the whole thing is the personal health care reform show and so he believes in taking that on so t- continue with us and what you were talking about last week and change yeah well fl- last week we talked about change a little bit i did kind of a buffet of health care information because i had just a plethora of information to share um and so this week, I want to continue on with the whole change thing. And the episode today is episode 16. The only constant is, is change. Because the only thing constant really is change. Everything changes every day, every minute, every second. There's always change going on. Nothing stays where it is. Um, it's kind of like uh, I, I love when people come in, come into the gym. They come in to work out. It's, they're like, I just want to come in. I just want to maintain. That's all. I just want to maintain. I'm yeah, like, just don't let me. You, get- <laughs> you, you can't maintain. There's no maintain. There's no maintenance. You're either going forwards or you're going backwards. There's no mm. to stay in here. It, it doesn't happen. You can if you do the same workout all the time. You're going to go backwards because since you're not changing, your body's going to go backwards. That's just how that goes. So that's why I say the only constant is is change because everything is always changing. You have to change before everything else starts changing for you. Um, so it's status yes. quo. Yeah, is yeah, what no they're sa- is what they're all. saying, and that does not work. <laughs> no, at all. So uh, let's see here. We're going to start with a little health and news as usual, and I'm going to start off by pimping my page out again. Uh, it's uh, on Facebook. It's phcr.cbfit, cbfit, uh, or you can just type in personal health care reform. But phcr.cbfit is a lot easier. Um, let's see here. First thing up. There's a new bill uh, being introduced. Actually, it's being reintroduced. Hopefully, it will pass this time. Uh, it's being put out by the, the Alliance for Natural Health, uh, ANH. Uh, if you want to find out more about it, you can go on their website and go to naturalnews.com, which I get a lot of uh, my information from naturalnews.com. Um, oh. But uh, this, is, uh, this is Bill HR 1364. Uh, what this is, it's the um, Free Speech About Science Act, so FSAS. Uh, what it, what this bill does for, for us and for everybody uh, around the U.S. is anytime there's a natural product like cherries right now. We'll talk about cherries because it's about to be cherry season. Cherries are very, very uh, – if you're not having cherries, you need to have cherries. One, because they reduce inflammation. Uh, they help out with, uh, with any type of inflammatory pain issues. They're a great muscle relaxant, incredible muscle relaxant, actually. Um, I've had mm. clients now. Now I had, I, I have to use cherry extract, and it beats out any muscle any muscle relaxant they get from the doctor. Mm. Um, and it it cracks me up to see them after they use it. Like I can't believe it worked. I'm like, well, of course it worked. Cherry juice, and that <laughs> sounds good too. Yeah, uh, it's actually kind of therapy, but yeah, it works like a charm. Um, but uh, cherry producers cannot say anything about this. They can't put it on their airwaves. They can't do commercials touting. You know, I didn't know what that. cherries can do because yeah. they do that. If if a company that sells cherries does that, the FDA comes in, sues right. their butts mm-hmm. off like mm-hmm. you would not believe. Because once you say, "Hey, cherries will give you this benefit," you need to buy cherries. Um, you have now technically turned that food into a drug. Mm-hmm. FDA says, "No, we're not going to have that." This act will actually get it to where uh, food producers or anybody that you know makes cherries, oranges. You know, whole whole milk, raw milk. Raw milk's a good one right now to talk about because there's so much conspiracy about that. Um, they can extol the virtues of that. Show studies, talk about the studies, show all the science behind it mm-hmm. for all these products, so you can actually make decisions on what to have for yourself. Uh, so, you know, for people talking about uh, what to eat, what not to eat, it's hard to get the information for what to eat, what not to eat, what's really good, and what's not good because the food producers can't actually say anything about it. They're, they're muzzled right now. They cannot go on TV or anywhere and talk about the virtues of Whole Foods. Um, so it's it's a really big, very important uh, 
um, piece of legislation that hopefully will get voted on and passed because uh, it's going to help everybody out. Same thing with nutritional supplements. Nutritional supplements, if this passes, can actually talk about some of the science behind what they have in them. Uh, yeah, like and they can talk about the science because I think what I bet you that came from the days of people coming off the back of the trailer saying this will cure everything. And you had a lot of people. I mean, that was back, yes, you know, sort of, but you've got that. They used to the, sell cocaine, I mean, and stuff and say that was, you know, until they put the drugs on it. Maybe that did do stuff for you and gave you energy. But I think there were a lot of people they call it snake oil. So I think that that's probably but it should not keep you from being able to give valid studies. And yeah. and let people make that decision for Which themselves. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just I want to put that one out there for everybody, uh, so they can uh, call their color senators, call their congressmen, talk to them about that, tell me what that bill passed, so we know what's what's in our food and how it actually helps us out. We because want cherry juice. Stuff doesn't really help out. Yeah, and get some cherry juice because <laughs> uh, it works like a charm. Um, and get let's some. See. <laughs> Up next. Since we have uh, since we have uh, Easter coming up very soon, the battle of the battle. office candy jar. Oh no! Yeah, look at that. Candy jar. Because well, I I know Easter's coming up. There's be Easter candy all over the place. Everybody's gonna have peeps all around because everybody loves peeps and Casbury eggs, everything else. Um, peeps. Oh yeah, peeps. You know the little marshmallow peeps. They come pink and. Yellow and oh, okay. Yeah, you know what peeps and, are. Peeps. Uh, so for all my peeps out there, yeah. Uh, just so you know, for the for the candy in that big candy jar, uh, let's see here. Estimated annual cost for office to buy a fifty-five piece bag of fun-sized candies every week is five hundred forty-six dollars. So if you want to save that five hundred forty-six dollars, don't buy the candy. Uh, let's see here. Total calories over four weeks: nineteen hundred and twenty calories over four weeks with. Two pieces of candy. A day? Two. Those little bitty bite size Snickers bars that satisfy? Not really. Uh, yeah, 1,920 calories. I've been uh, eating those things at night. Oh. Over, the, over the course of a year, that's 20, almost 25,000 calories ah. over the course of a year. Just two little candies. And weight gain on that, 7.13 pounds. <gasps> so if you want to gain that 7.13 pounds, you might want to put down those Snickers. Uh, and that's just the little candy size Snickers. Those will be tiny things. Uh, you might want to leave those alone. There you go. Actual size. Well, what, do you, right what do you suggest they put out there instead? <laughs> uh, some nuts, some fruit, some trail mix, so anything but uh, this processed crap that gives okay. you a little, little sugar rush for like 15, 20 minutes, and then you backslide again, and you need some more, and then you keep going back because nobody eats just two. Or sugar free yeah. candy. Yeah. Uh, Actually, sugar-free candy, not so much because then you start taking a lot of sugar-free candy and you run to the bathroom all the time because they use stuff in there that well, will make you, it's basically laxatives is what sugar-free candy is at some some point. If you're having more than two, uh, that does happen. So mm. uh, just for everybody out there, just so you know, you might want to do that. Uh, instead of doing that, you know, bring an apple. Apple a day keeps mm -hmm. the doctor away. And it, it is actually true. They have They have done a study. Study actually does show that an apple a day does keep the doctor away, but literally, they run. All you do is you pull the apple up, say, you know, do that, show them with, with the apple. It's like a garlic to vampires. They run away. <laughs> okay, actually. Uh, no, just talking about all the bioflavonoids and everything, and apples, if you have one every day, chances of you getting sick are much reduced. Um, they're great for allergies, too, by the way, since it's allergy season. And we I'm are going into vegetable. We're going into vegetable and fruit season here, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The gardens, yes. fresh gardens. Yeah, so like all, all the farmer's markets, farmer's markets are going to be booming with all kinds of stuff. So if mm -hmm. you're not going to a farmer's market, go to one, uh, grab some of that. Yeah, well, <laughs> more Buddha's <laughs> brew. <laughs> now, last time it was blueberry. What is that one this time? Uh, this time I've got ginger. Okay. So like ginger ale? It tastes kind of like ginger ale or what? Yeah, it's still like ginger ale. No, it's, it's ginger and Mary Ann. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like here on Mary Gilligan's Ann. Isle, I'm sorry. Bit risque there, really. <laughs> okay. yeah, I, I here on like Gilligan's Ann. Isle, don't you? Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'm gonna have a little ginger and Mary Ann. That probably wouldn't go over real well. <laughs> well, the professor, the professor liked it. You know. Yeah, do, we, do we need to go back to my little sheet from last week on how many calories were burned during sex? <laughs> <laughs> 